Hey guys, welcome back, Ricky here. All right, so since my previous video about stropping materials, uh, cardboard versus leather versus a belt and <laughs> versus newspaper, a lot of folks have been writing me asking me if it's worth buying a strop over a whetstone or should you buy a whetstone over a strop. And so it kind of got me thinking, a lot of my knife maintenance over the last few months have been done on the strop. Uh, if you guys aren't aware, I have a family that I take care of and so, on days that I don't have time to go back and sharpen my knives, my knives are strops on a leather strop that I keep either beneath my knee sink or I just run back, run back here to the studio and I just strop really quickly. And so for me, stropping has been a huge time saver to keep my knives sharp. So many of you guys may be wondering, well, if a strop is so good, why should I buy a polished whetstone? And that's kind of what this video is hoping to address. At least I'm going to attempt to address that question. And for those who don't know how I measure my knife's sharpness, this is the Edgerunner PC50A. This device here has a filament that is cut and after it's cut, all of that pressure is actually measured on a very precise scale. So if I tell you a knife scored 256, it basically means that that knife took 256 grams to cut the filament on the top of the scale. And with this scale, the lower the number, the better the score. Here are the results of four hours of sharpening, rope cutting, resharpening, stropping, and rope cutting, and restropping has gotten me. <laughs> okay, so here are the first set of numbers. All these knives were sharpened on a Chocera, oh, I keep saying Chocera, the Professional 600. I stropped one knife on a Roll Buffalo strop. I stropped another knife on the Rika 5000. And then the third knife got a treatment of the polishing stone and the strop. The strop knife got a score of 308 off of the wet stone. The Rika knife got a score of 310. So they're within two points of each other. They are virtually the same sharpness at this point. And then the Rika strop knife was actually the dullest. It got a score of 338. So it was about 10% less sharp than the other two knives. So once I established a baseline score, I went ahead and actually stropped the knives on their prospective materials. So the strop knife got a score of 230. The Rika got a score of 260. And the Rika strop knife got a score of 215. So we can see right off the bat that the Rika knife was actually the dullest and the strop, the leather strop by itself actually gave us a slightly cleaner edge than the Rika by itself. After that, I did 10 cuts on the rope. After 10 cuts on the rope, I went back to the PT-50A and did a cut to get a baseline measurement for all the knives again. The strop knife got a score of 301. The Rika knife got a score of 286 and the Rika strop knife got a score of 233. So after I took the measurements from the first 10 cuts, I did another 10 cuts. And here are the scores. The strop knife got a score of 340, the Rika knife got a score of 309, and the Rika strop knife got a score of 276. And then afterwards, I stropped them again. The strop knife got a score of 277, the Rika knife got a score of 261, and the Rika strop knife got a score of 240. Then I brought them all back onto the rope for 10 cuts. And after the 10 cuts, we got 236 on the strop knife, we got 284 on the Rika knife, and 253 on the Rika strop knife. After I measured all that, went back to the rope. <laughs> I know, this is, trust me, this took forever to do. And we got a score of 355 for the strop knife, 303 for the Rika knife, and 272 for the Rika strop knife. So after that, I went back to stropping the knives on their prospective strops. Then afterwards, I remeasured everything and the strop knife got a score of 296. The Rika knife got a score of 252 and the Rika strop knife got a score of 226. And then, yes, back onto the rope for another 10 cuts. We got a score of 390 for the strop knife, 318 for the Rika knife, and 267 for the Rika strop knife. Am I done? No, of course I'm not done. In perfection fashion, we've gotta do something more to torture myself and you guys as well. So I took all three knives back on their prospective strops and got a final score. And the strop knife ended up with a score of 366. The Rika knife got a score of 299. And then the Rika strop knife got a score of 259. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys my interpretation of why the knives scored the way they did and what that data actually means. So first off, 
Stropping. Is stropping useful and should you buy a strop? Well, certainly I think stropping is very useful. As you can tell from the data, stropping, even just on a piece of leather by itself or even on a cardboard, if you guys haven't seen my previous video, you're looking at 30% of increased sharpness just off of the whetstone. So stropping certainly is a very useful tool or a very useful device to have at home. So the question is, should you get a strop over a whetstone? Well, based on the data that we see today, stropping is not necessarily a replacement for a whetstone, but certainly a complement. So let's compare the data from the Vrika 5000 polishing stone and the strop. The knife off of the whetstone wasn't quite as sharp as the strop's knife on the leather, but what we're seeing is that the edge retention is actually slightly better than a knife stropped. Even though in the very beginning, we're seeing that the Rika knife wasn't quite as sharp as the strop knife, over the course of 50 cuts, what you're seeing is that the knife polish on the Rika 5000 actually has a sharper edge and a edge that will actually last longer than the knife stropped on the leather strop. So what we're seeing from the data is actually pretty interesting and um, I didn't think that it was gonna turn out this way at all. I thought that the strop was always gonna have a slightly better edge or over the course of the entire test as opposed to the whetstone or the polishing whetstone. So I'm a little surprised to see that the polishing whetstone not only gave the knife a sharper edge over the longer course of the test, it also gave the edge a better edge as well. So that is the data. But then it got me thinking, why does a polishing stone give you a better edge holding ability on a leather strop? Because there is some give, even though this leather strop here at the Rolled Buffalo is very stiff and very strong, it does have a minimal amount of give. It can be actually taking away levels or micro materials from the knife's shoulder. So what you're seeing is how strops actually work. Strops actually take off material and kind of absorb all of the micro materials on the cutting edge, even on the shoulder, uh, versus a whetstone as opposed to pulling that material off, it's actually just realigning that material. Again, I know that's not scientific, but that's the only way I can explain the differences in performance between a strop and a polishing whetstone. Compared to a leather strop, a good polishing whetstone will help you maintain that edge and help you redefine that edge as opposed to a strop the shoulder of that edge may be lost over time, which is, I think, what we saw here in this test today. Now, again, all these numbers are measured in grams. We are literally splitting hairs at this point. Unless you're comparing the sharpest knife to the dullest knife, between the knives, you're probably not gonna notice a huge performance difference in real life. So I just wanna at least make that clear. So here is the conclusion. A strop is definitely worth considering if you are looking to get a sharp knife with a relatively, low amount of time investment. Uh, I strop my knives once a week. Uh, I throw my knives onto a strop about one or two minutes at a time and my knives stay fairly sharp that way. If you want a longer lasting edge and are willing to put in the time to actually make that happen, a good polishing whetstone is definitely going to trump a leather strop in terms of an edge that you can get and an edge that can hold over time. And if you are willing to invest in a good polishing whetstone and a leather strop, the combination of both of them will give you the sharpest and longest lasting edge. This video took four hours to shoot. Hopefully you guys appreciate that. <laughs> if you guys did, please give the video a thumbs up and I will catch you guys in the next video.